So why would you want to bake your textures? Well, if you make textures for something you want to animate, you can make some procedural ones pretty quickly, but to make them seamless, it's common to use object texture coordinates. And when you deform things, you get this problem. You can see my character is moving, but the texture stays in the same spot. If you want the texture to deform properly, that's when you would use a UV map. Baking allows us to make a texture however we want, and basically convert it to an image that works correctly with our UV map. If you want to make games and you're modeling and texturing with Blender, you're probably going to need to bake your textures to get them to work correctly in your game engine. Check out my Patreon for all the projects files for my videos, coupon codes for free Gumroad products, and a bunch of other files that I don't share anywhere else. I also donate some of the profits to environmental causes each month. Link is in the description. All right, let's get started. All right, so here we are in Blender. I'm using version 3.0 for this one. And uh, we have these two characters that I made in a program called Magic of Voxel. If you saw my last video, you'll know about this already. Basically, when you bring in your characters from Magic of Voxel as a file type called PLY, all of the color information is stored in vertex colors right here. So if you're making characters in Magic of Voxel and you want to put them in your game, you're probably going to have to turn their textures into a UV map. And it's not that hard to bake vertex colors into a UV map. I'll show you how. Basically, you need to know that you need to be using cycles for this. You don't need to render anything in cycles. You can see up here I'm still in look dev, so we're still seeing things basically in Eevee. Um, but you need to set this to cycles or else it won't work. I also always have this set to CPU when I'm baking. When I try to do it with GPU, it just doesn't really work that well. It doesn't work right. I get errors and stuff. You also need to make sure that whatever you want to bake um, whatever object you're using is UV unwrapped. And you can find this out. I'm just going to create a separate window right here. I'm just going to change this to the UV editor. If you select your object and go into edit mode, have everything selected, if you're not seeing anything here, then your character or your object is not UV unwrapped. You can also find this out by going down here to object data properties. You can see we have a bunch of vertex groups. Um, we have some vertex colors because, you know, Magic of Oxel just did that for us. And under UV maps, there's nothing. So we need a UV map. Easy way to do this is just select everything in edit mode, hit U, and go to Smart UV Project. And I usually set the island margin to something pretty small, like 0 0.005 or something like that. This just makes it so that these islands over here are not like touching completely. If you said to zero, they'll be like right up next to each other. So this is a really quick way of unwrapping things. And now you can see we have a UV map here. So let's go back over to render properties. And now that we know this is UV unwrap, we can look at different bake types. So by default, it's set to combined, which is basically just going to look at all of the things you have going on here and try to, um, you know, it's going to include all of the lighting all of the, you know, metalness, all of the roughness, and turn that into like one map, um, which is not what we want. We pretty much just want the color. I do this in two ways. I either use emission or diffuse. Let's check out diffuse first. So over here, we don't want to bake the lighting onto this. That would basically include all of these shadows and things like that. So you can turn off direct and indirect and only leave color. Um, this margin right here, it's basically going to blur the edges of all of the colors if it's like really small or anything like that. So I usually turn this down pretty low to something like two. If you set this to zero, all of your blocks of colors it will have completely like hard edges. So I usually blur this very slightly like that. And then we need to come over here and I'll just hit shift A, S to search and search for image texture. Because we need to create an image, these colors will be baked too. So I'll just create a new one. I'll just name this something like fish diffuse. We'll start off by making this something pretty small. Um, the bigger you make it, the larger your image, the longer it will take to bake. But obviously the better quality it can be if it's a larger image. So I'll change this to something small like 256. And then over here in our UV editor, you can find that image you just created, fish diffuse. And here we have right here, it's just... You know, it's just blank so far. We didn't bake anything. So before I bake this, I'm just going to turn the subsurface all the way down and just unplug this right here. Make sure this is selected. Make sure our image is selected and hit bake. So now our image isn't blank anymore. You can see it has similar colors to our character. Let's just try plugging in this image right here and see how it looks. So it actually looks pretty similar. If you zoom in really close, you can see it's kind of blurry. You know, we have some blurred edges. If you want it to not be blurry on your image right here, change this interpolation from linear to closest, and it'll just create some hard edges. 
you might be able to see some artifacts a little more clearly. Any artifacts like this are pretty much just either your uh, UV unwrapping not being as clean as it could, or your image is low resolution, which in our case, our image is really low, low res. It's only um, 256 by 256, I believe. If you want to uh, change the size of this, you can just go to image right here and resize. And you can make this something higher. I'll just go up to like 1024. So this is a 1K texture. And then we can rebake this. Um, just remember that when you make your image larger, it will take longer. We'll plug this back into the base color. Make sure your object is selected. Make sure your image is selected and then hit bake. All right, so you can see over here now, these edges are much cleaner. So if you zoom in really close, you can still see some parts don't line up perfectly, like right here, if you can even see that. Just because it's higher res, it's harder to spot those things. You have to be really close to even notice them. So if you're working with things that are really low res, you might want to mess around with this margin right here. Um, like I said, if you turn it up higher, basically these edges will just kind of blur over here. So one downside to uh, baking uh, diffuse through the principled BSDF is that if you have any of these other things changed, it might not bake correctly. So for instance, I had subsurface scattering turned up just a little and my first bake didn't turn out right. And I think it was because of the subsurface scattering. I turned it off and it started working well. So if you want to use diffuse, a thing you can do is just bring in a diffuse shader right here and just plug it in like this and just completely bypass the principal BSDF and then bake it that way. Um, and that might give you just like more clean results. Um, but instead of doing that, what I like to do, what I normally do is change this from diffuse to emit. So what this lets you do is basically just, uh, well, this is a node wrangler thing, which you can turn on under edit and preferences, add-ons, and just find the node wrangler and turn that on, it should be built in. If you're using Node Wrangler, you can hit Control Shift and left click on anything, and it will just plug it directly in here. And this is basically just using um, an emission shader. So you can do that with like anything you have in here and then bake it um, as a mission, and it will just bake this directly like that. So that's how I like to do things. And you don't have to worry about direct or indirect lighting because you know, when it's set to a mission, you can see that this is shadeless. It has no shading at all. And this doesn't just work for vertex colors. You could also use this for things like roughness, things like that. Let me set up a quick example. Okay, so I just set up a roughness map real quick. It's just a noise texture with um, high detail and high roughness. So if we wanted to bake the roughness as a separate image, um, we could by changing this to roughness like that. Um, but like I said, normally what I do is just kind of bake everything as a mission. And what we would need to do is just duplicate this, press this button right here, and that'll just make a copy. We can change this to fish roughness, and we'll change it over here to fish roughness. And then because we're baking this as a mission, we want only our roughness to be visible. So we can just control shift left click on this node right here. Basically whatever is being plugged into your roughness. And this is what we want to bake. Make sure this is set to a mission, make sure that you have your character selected, and make sure that your image that you want to bake to is also selected. Come over here and hit bake, and that baked pretty quickly. So now let's plug this into the roughness and take a look at it. So you can see it's pretty low res, but it did bake, and it baked properly. Let's try baking this a little higher res now. So I'll just go over right here to image, resize, and I'll change this to something like 1024. Once again, control shift left click right here. Um, another thing you can also do is just plug this directly into surface like that, and it'll treat it like a mission. Select your character, select your image, and hit bake. And you see how much that cleared up over here? That was quite a bit. All right, let's take a look at this now. All right, so that didn't take long at all to bake that one. I think a mission tends to bake a little faster. And if you zoom in closely, you can see it's pixelated, but if you're using this for a game and you don't plan on getting very close to your character or anything like that, um, this might be this might be high res enough. It didn't take too long. One thing you need to know is that you have to save these images. You can see there's a little asterisk, a little star next to image. That means that it's unsaved. So if you see this and you don't want to lose any of your progress, just come over here to image and save as and just save it somewhere that you'll remember. 
If you go to close Blender without saving these images, it usually gives you a warning. If you don't save it, you close it and open, open it back up, your images will just be gone. You'll have to rebake things. And depending on how high res those are, that might cost you a lot of time. So make sure that you're saving your images. That's really important when it comes to baking. And once you save them, if you want, you can um, pack them to your blend file by going to File, External Data, and um, Pack Resources. And you can see down at the bottom it says it packed four files. So now if you give somebody your blend file, um, the images should automatically just be like built into the blend file and you shouldn't have to send them your images. Because it can be kind of annoying when you go to share your file and none of the images work. For maps that don't contain color information, um, it's a good idea to change the color space to non-color. There are certain types of maps that won't work correctly unless you set it that way. Um, like if you're trying to bake a normal map or something like that, I think you have to set it to non-color for it to work properly. So that's a little tip too. So this can get kind of tedious if you're trying to bake a whole bunch of different maps, um, especially for multiple objects. So in that situation, I recommend just like checking out some add-ons. You can see on Blender Market, there are quite a few add-ons that are made specifically to streamline this process. Um, Blender, as far as I know, doesn't have any like batch baking um, things, any tools built into Blender yet. So yeah, if you have a bunch of things to bake, you might want to check out one of these add-ons. All right, that's it for this one. Once again, all of the project files are on Patreon. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.